verses 7 and 8. And, here, and here's why. Because I don't want to be too repetitive. We're going we're gonna to cover all this. Is it, does that make sense? Not skipping it because I'm scared of it or anything like that. No, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna touch on that. You'll see. If you go back and read it yourself, you know what, you know what I'm talking about. But let's pick it up in verse 9. Now, again... Uh, Here's, here's what you're going to see. Now, now, verse 9 through 20 is kind of a little intro into the letters of the churches. Now, these letters to the churches, guys, are, are so important. All right? Because who's the church? It ain't the building? Oh, okay. It's the people that make up the church, right? It's the believers. All right, that's the church. So when we call say the church, we're talking about the church. Okay? Believers. Now, here in Revelation, this letter of Revelation... And these letters to the churches, and you'll see that if you hang with us here. These letters go out to seven specific churches for a particular reason. All right? One, to encourage the church, to challenge the people. And and, and you'll see Jesus calls some folk out too, (laughs) okay, in these letters. But listen to me, and I want you to understand this. There's a reason why he chooses these seven churches. See, if, if back in biblical days, if you looked at the location of these seven churches, you will see they were located in seven different cities that had all the trade, all the medicine, all the libraries. I imagine there was a Chick-fil-A up in there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Most importantly, though, they had a postal route. All right. So if you're going to get information out to the world, all right, and out to everywhere that needs to happen, you would want a place that had the mailman, right? Uh, that's how you get a letter to somebody, right? You know, hey, send you a letter. All right, unless you email. Anyway, things, times have changed. But but here, see, John didn't have email. All right, he didn't have FaceTime. He had to write it on something and give it to the mailman. And here's what I say to you: Did that work? I would say so. We have a copy today, right? The book of Revelation. So that's why he used these specific churches. Not that they were more holier than thou or anything like that. It's just how God used it. Amen. All right, verse 9. Everybody ready? Again, if there's anything ever taught in this church from me and behind this pulpit, all right, and you don't understand, please come to me at some point. Let's talk about it. I don't want you to walk out of here and like over your head. I sat under too many preachers that preached over my head, and I didn't know what in the world they were talking about. I just went on kicked out and started thinking about the game or something later. Talking about thinking about setting a hook on a big bass, right? That's what I started thinking about. No, I want you to think about Jesus. I don't want you to get confused. Come to me, please. Amen? All right. Verse 9. Here is the writer of Revelation. Now, he is the one putting pen to the paper. All right? This is not him or his heart. This is coming from Jesus to this man. Holy Spirit, same thing, to this man. All right. I, John, writing to the church, right? Both your brother from another mother and your companion, watch what he says, in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. Have you you experienced any of that in your walk with the Lord? All right. It says, he was on the island that is called Patmos. Why? For the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Whoop, there it is. All right. Why is he writing this? He says, I'm writing this for the testimony of Jesus Christ and for the word of God. Now, first of all, let's look at who this John is because, you know, John could be, there's a lot of Johns in the world, right? This is John who wrote the Gospel of John. When you go Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, it's that John. All right? When you you look at towards the end of the Bible, right before you get to Revelation, you find 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. He's the writer of those as well. Okay? This is the same John. This is the same John that was at the foot of the cross with Jesus' mama. And then Jesus looked down and and says, Hey, take care of my mama. Take care of my mama. this This is this John. Okay? Why is he on island of Patmos? Well, he had been preaching Jesus. The Romans arrest him. They put him on a deserted island. They thought they could shut him up. Now think about this for a minute. They thought they were silencing John from preaching Jesus. All right? Let let your mind roll on this. Because technically, 
What they were doing was getting him out there where he could be alone with God. He was positioned where he could be alone with God. He was being still and knowing that he is God. And God was able to speak to him this revelation. Think about it. He, he, he put him out there where he could get away from the hustle and bustle and, the, and all the other stuff. And he positioned him to be able to receive from the Lord. See, a lot of us don't receive from the Lord because we're too busy. Ain't got time for that. Right? We need to make time for that. He said, be still. I think it's Psalm 4610, maybe. I, probably, maybe. I hope I ain't lying. It's be still and know that I am God. So John is still. The Lord is absolutely talking to him. So the time on this island of Patmos, John is being able to get this revealing book. And I would say it worked because he's still preaching Jesus today. Isn't he or not? Isn't he or isn't he not? He's still preaching Jesus. They thought they were putting him on an island by himself where he could never preach Jesus again, but he's still preaching Jesus today. We got his word. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? You can't silence Jesus. Who's going to stop the king? You cannot stop him. In, In Luke 19, around verse 39 and 40, so the disciples and, and some of the, the other people, Jesus is coming into town and they're saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to Jesus, King Jesus. We love you, Jesus, Jesus. They were shouting Jesus, right? They were praising Jesus. But the Pharisees, the religious leaders, they get ticked off. They come to Jesus and say, Jesus, you need to shut them folk up. You need to make them hush. We, we, we can't have none of that. And what did Jesus say when he said that? He said, if I tell them folks to be quiet, he says, the stones will cry out for me. Isn't that awesome? You can't stop the king. You know what I'm saying? Listen, the same God that made a donkey talk, right? The same God that made an axe head float. Men, figure that one out. Okay? This is the same God, the same one that can make a rock that, that's not, that doesn't have lungs, doesn't have breath, doesn't have guts, you know, doesn't have, a, you know, whatever, okay? That rock can stand up and say, Jesus! Why? Because we couldn't. If, if, if somebody's going to praise him, if somebody doesn't, something will. You got to realize that we can't, you can't stop Jesus. You cannot silence Jesus. But here's the thing about me and you, though. We should never let a rock do our job. I don't want to rock do my job. It's our job. It's our job. I love, uh, this is in Jeremiah, you can write this stuff down, 20 verse 9. I'm just, just mentioning these things. Jeremiah says this. I think this is really cool. He says, hey, I'm not going to speak of Jesus. I'm not even going to mention his name. You know, and, and, and when he said that, he's like, he's really trying. I can't, I can't say, I can't say, I can't say. It's, it's like somebody, you know, try, trying to set on some good information. You can't set on that. You know, you got your secret fishing hole. You know, you, you want to set on it, but then you're ripping them real good and you're sending people pictures and they see where you're at, you know? They know where you're at. <laughs> Y'all forgive me. Anyway, here's what he's saying. He said, I can't speak of Jesus. I can't even mention Jesus. But then he says, mm, I can't do it. I can't do it. His word is in my heart and it's like a burning fire. Man, I got to get this thing out. He said, it's like it's shut up in my bones. He said, I, I was weary even trying not to speak Jesus. You know as well as I do, if you've been serving the Lord and you got a passion for the Lord and you start struggling and you start going your own way, man, you're so convicted, you, you're, so, you, you, you're so full of mess, you're like, ah, mm, ah. you hear people say something, you're like, you want to interject, you want to interject, like, but no, I'm having a pity party right now. Listen, it's like, it's like a fire, you got to get it out, man, especially when you know Jesus, when you know Jesus. So let me ask you this, we'll just use this as a challenging moment. How, how can the devil silence us? I mean, we, we got this testimony that Jesus came down to this earth, wrapped himself in the earth suit in flesh, lived this life, died, paid for our sin debt, forgave us, taught us how to live, died, man, the most horrible death you could possibly die, and then got up out of the grave and he said, hey, I'm going to come back and get you all one day, those that believe in me. How in the world can we set on such information when us, when we gave our life to Jesus, he set us free. 
He, he took that addiction from us. He took that cussing out of our mouth. He, he restored our families. He's, 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 he's changed our life. How can we be silent on something like that? We, we can't, ladies, y'all can't, even be, y'all can't even be silent on the sale down at the, down at the mall. Hey, they got shoes on. They got bread two for one over at Brookshire's, you know. They got dresses on down at Dillard's, you know. Hey, no, you know, you, you, it's hard to sit on that information. It's hard to sit on that information, right? You, you want to you tell your friends about it. But how can we sit on such a great testimony? Oh, man, he's, he, he's delivered me from anxiety and fear, you know. But so, so how does he do it? Well, we get mad at God. We get mad at God. You know, or we don't have time anymore. Listen, Jesus is a big deal, church. He's the cure. He's the only one that satisfies. Amen? So verse 9, John says, hey, my main thing is to preach the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. And that's 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 our challenge as well. As believers, that's our challenge. Listen, guys, this word right here is like a container. It's like a bucket. And it's full of God's glory, his righteousness, his principles, his promises, his love, his heart. we got to speak this word. Our families need this word. Folks at our job need this word. People down at the ball field and Walmart, at the gas station, for real, need this word, right? Put a, put a, scratch that price out and write something else, please, you know? Man, <laughs> listen, those that are around you need this word. It's our job to, you got to realize, it's our job, parents especially, to secure the next generation. We, we don't need to be a rare dying breed to pass this thing on. Okay, let's go to verse 10. Are you ready? So he says, I was in the Spirit. Notice the capital S. Holy Spirit speaking to him on the Lord's day. And I heard from behind me a voice, it's a voice, sound like a trumpet. Think about it. Have you ever heard, heard, heard a voice that sounded like a trumpet? Saying, notice the red letters. Now, John didn't run out of black ink right there. Red letters are there for a reason. If you've got a red letter edition, that's Jesus speaking. He says, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, I want you to write it in a book. And send it to the seven churches which are in Asia. To Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Okay. Real simple. There's John. He's on the island by himself. Jesus shows up from behind him and speaks like to scared him to death. He turns around and he sees Jesus. And you'll see that in just a moment. And Jesus says, hey, John, I'm the Alpha. I'm the Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. I'm the first and the last. He says, the things I'm about to tell you, write it in a book and get this thing out. And I believe he did because we got a copy right here. Now, who's this speaking? Red letters. Jesus. All right. Notice what he says. And I'm so glad y'all are here. Notice what he says. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. All right. Let's dig into this. Okay, you have to pay attention to get this, because if you get this, it would be like, wow. Okay? Think about it real, real careful here. Alpha and Omega. All right? What is that? What does it mean? Okay? It's the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. Okay? Alpha, Omega. It's just like our A and Z. You, you follow me? Our, our A and Z is the first and last letters of our alphabet, but we're English. We're in English. We speak English, kind of, you know. Got a little country in there and some soul. Anyway, <laughs> y'all doing all right? Okay. Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. Al- Omega, last letter of the alphabet. Okay. What is Jesus saying? All right. Here's what he's saying, and I'll show you. He says, I'm the fulfillment of Scripture. All right, that's what he's saying. He's like, I'm the fulfillment of Scripture. Okay, think about it. Let me, let me prove this to you. Scripture is made up of words. Y'all still with me? Scripture, our Bible, is made up of words. Okay, 
Words do not exist without letters. All right? Still with me? By Jesus calling himself Alpha, Omega, first and last, Alpha and Omega are letters. All right? Letters? All right? So that means he's not just the Word of God himself. He's the very letters that make up the Word of God. He's in the details, baby. He's in the detail. When he knows every hair on your head or the lack thereof, he knows the details. If he goes to every sparrow's funeral, he knows the details. If he knows our thoughts and intentions and our motives, he knows the details. He's the very letters that make up the word. Okay? You may say, well, Brother Scott, what do you mean by he's the word? Well, uh, John 1, 1, the book of John. John, remember John. He's the one writing Revelation. He starts off his book, and he says, In the beginning was the word. Okay? The word was with God, and the word was God. Okay? We read that, and like, okay, well, well the word's with God. Okay? If you go down to verse 14, you, you see this. It says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us who became flesh and dwelt among us jesus okay you would put jesus where it says word in the beginning was jesus all right jesus was with, with god jesus was god and jesus is god and jesus became flesh and dwelt among us you see that so he is the word of god and he's not just the word of god but he is the very letters that make up this word who's the word who's the very letters of the word that's exactly right okay now let's go a little bit deeper can we go a little bit deeper with that everybody understand me so far okay scripture the bible is written Okay, Old Testament. We got an Old and New Testament. Old Covenant, New Covenant. Okay, Old Te Testament is written in Hebrew. Hebrew. All right, Jewish Hebrew. It's written in Hebrew. All right, New Testament is tr translated and written in Greek. All right, makes sense. We're talking about original. Like if you was going to grab an original put together Bible, you'd have to have Hebrew. You'd have to be able to read Hebrew, read Hebrew and Greek. I got one in my office back there. You, you, yeah, I can't read it. It just looks like, you know, Chinese to me. I wish I could read it. That would be really cool. But I got to where I pick up a few things. Hebrew, you read from right to left. It go backwards. It's really, really different. But so your Bible was, was originally written, okay, Old Testament was what? New Testament was? That's exactly right. You got it. Now, I really want you to appreciate something here. I really want you to appreciate the wisdom of God. Well, let me just go back and just say this. I want you to understand the, the Bible just for a second. It was translated from Gr Hebrew and Greek to English in about the 1500s. That's been a day or two ago, okay? And it took them about 10, 10 years to translate that Bible. And what they had to do to translate it and had to make sure, and what even what they put into Scripture, you wouldn't believe the, the vetting that had to be done. You know what I'm saying? So it, 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 this is the Word of God. Okay. When it was translated to English, all right, then, then the English would put it into uh, chapters and verses. All right? In other words, it, it, it wasn't originally written with chapters and verses. Chapters and verses help you find where you need to go. You know what I mean? I said Revelation chapter 1. You, well, you could have found Revelation. But if I said, hey, let's go to verse 9, you, you couldn't find verse 9. You would have to watch where it says, I, John, and say, well, I'm, I'm with you now, brother. You know what I mean? Make sense? Okay. Now, let me show you this. Appreciate the wisdom of God. So, Greek, New Testament, Hebrew, Old Testament. All right? Jesus, when he spoke out of his mouth, he did not speak Greek. Okay, Jesus in his earth suit was a Jew. All right, so if he's a Jew, he would have spoke what? Hebrew or Greek? Hebrew, original Hebrew. Now they've messed with Hebrew, and, and but anyway, he spoke original Hebrew. All right, make sense? Now, the first and last letters of the Hebrew alphabet are different than our. A and Z in our English and are different from the Alpha and Omega in Greek. 
The Hebrew letters, in other words, this is what Jesus would have actually spoke out of his mouth. It wouldn't have been Alpha Omega. Even the meaning is still good and still the same and it's powerful, right? He would have actually said, I am the Aleph and the Tav. Okay? A-L-E-P-H. All right? That's, that's first. And last would be Tav, T-A-V. Okay? That's the first and last letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Now, this may be boring you to tears, but let me just go into this and just show you the wisdom and meaning of God. All right? There are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Okay? In our alphabet, our A means A. And it, it has a little A and a big A, right? Uh, we got lowercase, uppercase. It means nothing else. You got to put them together to even make a meaning, right? Well, the Hebrew alphabet, each letter, okay, has three things. It has a numerical value, it has a pictogram or a picture, and it has a meaning, all right? Because, I mean, we're like, our poor little old A and B, they just A and B, right? But Aleph and Tav, the A, the A R A and Z, can't, can't hold Aleph and Tav. All right, are you ready? So Jesus is saying, I'm the olive tav, okay? So what, is, what does this mean? Now, I don't know the numerical value. I didn't look any of that up. But I want, to sh I want to tell you what the pictogram is and the meaning of that. Because if he's saying that I'm that, then we need to know what that is, right? Okay? We know he's saying he's the first and the last, but there's a lot more to that. All right? Olive, okay, the pictogram would be an ox head. I got my little deal right here. Let me show you. That's what the pictogram looks like right here. Ox head. Can y'all see that? That's ox head. That's, you can see the ox head, can't you? Right? That's the ox head. That's, that's the pictogram. Okay, this is the pictogram for the top. It's, it's an X turned sideways. It's, okay? You with me so far? I'm going to set it right there so y'all can look at it. That's why I got it in here. All right? So the, pi the picture of the Aleph, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, is an ox head. Okay, the meaning of the ox head and the meaning of the aleph, and aleph means strength and service. You think of an ox. You hook him up to, to or a big old cow, big old bull, whatever. You hook that joker up to, to, to plow your field. That sucker's strong. You can jump on there and he'll, he'll drag you everywhere you want to go. Right? What, what else is a picture? It's a picture of service. He's, he's, serve, he's, he's doing something. He's working. He's serving you. You know, Let's get them holes so we can get them cucumbers in the ground. You know what I mean? So that's what it is. Aleph, strong, all right, strong servant. Strength, service. Picture, ox head. With me? All right, that's the first. So Jesus is saying, hey, I'm the strong ox, baby. He says, I'm the one that's strong, and I came to serve. Okay, what's the Tav mean? The Tav means the picture is the cross. It's an X. It's like a destination. On, when you say, Siri, take me to so-and-so, it's your destination. It's the X marks the spot, right? All right? And, and the meaning of that means covenant or destination. Covenant or destination. All right? The picture is a cross, right, of the letter Tav and pictogram, picture, cross, and then covenant or destination. All right, now, let's put these two together. What does that mean? It means that Jesus is the ox, the strong servant who came to serve. That's why he says, I'm the alpha, the omega. I'm the aleph, but I'm also the top. So he's the strong servant that came to serve, right? Strong ox that came to serve, okay? And his, what? His destination or his covenant was where? cross. You can't make this stuff up, church. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you thought wrote the Bible. You cannot make this stuff up. His very name in the Hebrew alphabet means the strong servant who came to, to a destination for a covenant, which is the cross. Can't make it up. You can't. That should blow your natural mind. Let me take you somewhere. Matthew 20. Let me show you something right quick. Matthew 20. Whole revelation. We'll be back. Is this making sense? Now, if you go into and you start reading Hebrew and you start looking at the, 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 what the actual letter looks like in Hebrew, Aleph and Tav, 
you will start seeing those two together all through Scripture. It's in the beginning. Genesis 1.1, it says, In the beginning, Olive Tav created. It'll blow your mind. You, you will see it right there and you go, Oh my goodness. It was from the very beginning that Jesus already knew that he had to come to this earth and die for his people. Oh, this thing's way bigger than you think. So if he's this big, don't you think he can handle what you're going through right now? But you got to give it to him. you got to give it to him. Let me show you this in Matthew 20. Now, we're talking about Jesus being the strong servant. I'm telling you all, when we study the book of Revelation, it's going to take us all over the place. I hope you're here for the long run on this thing. Matthew 20, verse 20. Let's set this up. Y'all still with me? Y'all want to go a little more? Okay. So, here we go, verse 20. The mother of Zebedee's sons, okay, this is Zebedee and his boys and his wife. So the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus, see the capital H, Jesus, that'd be him, with her boys, <laughs> kneeled down and asked something from Jesus. And he said, verse 21, what do you wish? She said to him, Jesus, grant that my two boys of mine may sit, one on your right hand and the other on your left, in your kingdom. <laughs> now you think about this. You know them boys have probably been in mama's ear, all right, wanting to be great. Now they're wanting to be great, right? And they tight with Jesus. You ever known somebody that was famous? You know, you feel like you're tight with them. You got, your, got their phone number or whatever. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, like they tight with Jesus, and they're like, hey, Jesus, you know, you're talking about all this kingdom and all, and, and heaven one day, hey, we want to be sitting one on your right, one on your left. And they, got, they, they had their mama come ask him this. <laughs> Wait a minute, you, you, you mean to tell me, you got to be real careful right here. You, you mean to tell me you want to sit with Jesus? Kind of almost ask Jesus? You know what I mean? I mean, if you're sitting with him, you know, you want people to look up at you too. Grab a hold of this. Grab a hold of this. Remember what got the devil kicked out of heaven? His pride. So you got to be real careful right here with what, what, what they say. Watch Jesus' answer in verse 22. Now keep in mind, I'm, talk, I'm trying to talk, tell you that Jesus is a servant. Okay? So, so I'm coming back to that. Jesus answered and says, uh, you don't know what you ask. <laughs> Baby girl, you don't even know what you're asking. He says, watch this. Are you able to drink the cup that I'm about to drink? What is he talking about? Jesus, hearing a few, right, is about to get arrested. First of all, betrayed by Judas, but with a kiss. He's about to be arrested, drugged into the city, go through that whole, all this mess, talking to all these pilots, all these, and end up being beaten, tied to a whipping post, beaten. Listen, the Bible, Isaiah says he's beaten beyond human resemblance. Think about that. How bad would it take for you to get whipped to look, not even look like a human anymore? You ever drove by something on the side of the road, you're trying to figure out what's laying there dead, and you can't figure it out? That's what Jesus looked like. Yet he didn't have a broken bone. That's a, lot of, that's a lot of whipping. And then what else did he do? They, then they said, hey, Jesus, carry your own cross from that point up the hill, and then we're going to nail you to it. That's the cup that he's about to drink. All right? And these boys want to set one on the run on the right, one on the left. What you talking about, Willis? Yeah. No. No. This, this, listen. He's the perfect sinless lamb of God, whipping post, cross, death, and oh, I didn't forget to tell you this, uh, he gets up out of the grave. So, do you think these two boys can handle that? <laughs> no, no. Now, go, go run over here right quick to, to, to Matthew 26. Let me, this, this, is a, this is a rabbit trail from the story that I'm on right here. I'm going to show you just how dedicated these boys are. Matthew 26, verse 36. They were confident enough to want to sit on one side of Jesus and the other side, right? Like, we got you, Jesus. We right, we're your right hand, man. We can do what you do. We got you, baby, right? Watch this. Matthew 26, verse 36. So you guys think you can handle this. All right. Watch verse 36. Jesus came 
with them to a place called Gethsemane to his disciples, okay? He said to those disciples, he says, guys, you sit here while I go over and I pray. I'm going to pray over there, all right? Watch who he took. <laughs> he took with him Peter and the two sons of who? <laughs> Zebedee. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Now, time out. Okay. Jesus knows, because he's God, that he is about to have all that happen to him. The cross, the whipping post, the whole nine yards. you got to remember, Jesus is all human, and he's all God at the same time. He feels pain. He knows hurt. You see his humanity here. He's praying because he doesn't want that. He don't want to go through that. His humanity does not want to get shredded and hung on a cross. Okay? So he's saying, guys, I want to take Peter and I want to take sons of Zebedee. Y'all come with me because I know y'all pray. Let's go together and we're going to all have a prayer meeting in the garden. Right? And he takes these three guys. Now here's what you got to understand about these three guys. One of them is Peter who just got through denying Jesus. <laughs> But he told Jesus, or, or he's about to get ready to deny Jesus, but he just told Jesus, I'll do anything for you, I'll die for you, Jesus. Right? And then you're talking about the sons of Zebedee that just said, hey, man, we want to sit on your right, sit on your left, baby. Okay, okay. Y'all come with me and listen. Hey, I, I ain't asking y'all to go to the cross with me. I'm not asking y'all to get whipped at the whipping post. I ain't even asking y'all to carry the cross up the hill for me. Just come with me and pray. Okay, 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 okay. All right, all right. Verse 38. So Jesus said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. So he went a little further, and Jesus fell on his face. He started praying. Listen to his heart. Can you imagine what you'd be praying? Oh, Father, if it's possible, let this cup, let this cross, let this whip and post pass from me. He says, but, but not my will be done, but yours. Then he came back after he prayed. He came to the disciples, and what were they doing? Sleep. Come on, man. He said to Peter, what? Could you not watch with me for an hour? He says, guys, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. He said, I know the spirit is willing, but man, your flesh is weak. Yeah. Second time he goes and he prays, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Unless I'll drink it, let your will be done. He came back. He found him sleep again. Come on, guys. Really? For their eyes were heavy. We're talking about the guys that said, hey, I can sit on your right, I can sit on your left. We can be like you, Jesus. They can't even pray. They can't even pray. He left them again the third time praying. He said the same words. And he came back, verse 45. He says, are y'all guys still sleeping and resting? He said, behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. He says, rise, let us be going. See, my, beloved, my betrayer is at hand. In other words, they're about to walk from there, and Judas is about to show up with the army. All he wanted these guys to do, that said, and I think he, he chose them specially, right, for that reason right there. Right there. Just to say, hey, uh, I'm going to show you. You can't even pray, let alone sit at my right hand and left hand. It just shows you. He's teaching them a lesson, right? Okay. Let's go back to where we were in verse 20, or chapter 20. Let's finish this. All right, where would we leave off? We left off at 23, so let's look at 24. Okay, okay. Let's go back to where we were. Zebedee said, hey, we'll sit on your right, sit on your left. All I did was take you over there and show you that they couldn't even pray. That's all I did. All right. <laughs> it's, it's somehow our, our, our hummingbird rear ends uh, try to override our whatever, uh, bulldog mouth, I guess. I'm trying to say it nice. I used to say it ugly ways, but anyway. Y'all get to my drift. Okay, so the ten, the others discipled here, verse 24, what the two brothers were saying and their mama, and they were displeased. But Jesus called them to himself, and watch what he says. He says, uh, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles, they lord over them. And those who are great exercise authority to them. Yet, okay, here's what he's saying. He's saying leaders in the world, 
not godly leaders. They're all about ruling over people, uh, uh, slave, you know, oh, obey me. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Anybody have a boss like that? They just, they just, they have a power trip. Okay, that's what he's saying. He says the world is all about power trips. All right, don't miss this. Okay, yet it shall be, verse 26, it shall not be like that with you. Whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. See the difference? And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Look at verse 28. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. Oh, church, did you just hear that? This is why he's the strong ox that pulls the plow. He came to serve. He did not come for us to bow down and serve him. That's why he didn't come in some palace. He didn't come like that. He came to serve us. And he wasn't passing out stuff to us and giving us free stuff either. Here's what he did. He came and died for our sin debt. He paid the price. He didn't put us on layaway. He paid the whole deal with his life on the cross. That's the greatest servant that you'll ever hear in your entire life. If you want an example to follow, follow Jesus. Great ones serve. You think of King David. He always run out in front of the enemy, run out in front of his guys. He served. He showed people how to serve. If you really want to make some great employees, show them how to work. Show them how to work. I see, I see, I see Pick back there, Pickle back there, man. And he lets me wash his trucks and things every month. And I, and I go out there and I was like, I couldn't find the tr- uh, keys to the truck. <laughs> He's like, hey, look at it. The keys are on the dipstick tube. <laughs> The keys are on the dipstick tube. Why are the keys on the dipstick tube? Because he tells his guys to check the oil before he get, they get in the truck. <laughs> and they ain't, been, they ain't been doing that. And they've been running them hot, running them out of oil or whatever. He's like, you, won't, you can't even get the keys if you don't check the oil. <laughs> That's a good leader right there, man. He's showing them how it should be done. It's real easy. Just do this. Just do this. You got to pull that out to get the key. So you might as well look at the dipstick tube. Hey, we good, right? It's brilliant. Learn from that man right there. He's a good leader. But that's the way Jesus did. He's like, guys, hey, let me tell you something. Jesus will never ask you to do something that he hadn't done himself. He will never ask you to do something that he, doesn't, he has not done himself. Amen. Amen. My goodness, I just looked at the clock. I'm out of time. I ain't even near, I'm halfway through my message, y'all. Halfway through my message. Listen, I'm going to close with something. Listen, I'm going to stop. We only did, what, a few verses today? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let me look. I, I'm, I kind of throwed off now. I just looked at the clock like, gum. Yeah, we did one, two, three, really three verses. Okay. <laughs> this, is how, this is how slow we're going to go. We'll pick up right here where we left off, but I want to close in a different spot. I ain't going to keep you here all day on Father's Day. Are you learning anything, though? Because, listen, the servant is the great one. He says, if you want to be great, serve. If you want to be great, serve. Find somebody to serve. Find somebody to serve. God, I can't believe I did that. All right, here we go. I got hung up on chicken so long. Listen, I'm going to put this on the screen. I'm going to read this to you. This is in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. I want you to listen to it. John again. <laughs> He says this, he says, what, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us? What, what, manner has, what manner has God lavished? That word bestowed means lavished. On. What, what kind of love has he thrown on you? Listen, that we should be called, be called the children of God. Think about that for a minute. God Almighty calls you his child. If you trust in him and you believe him who he is, you have hope in him, you are his child. And he is your father. I want you to let that soak in for a minute. 
He's, we call Father. Why do we call him Father? Well, one, he created us. You do realize that. He did create us and breathe his life into our lungs. And then, through Jesus, he adopted us after sin robbed us. You do realize he adopted you. He died for you. You, 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 you were, me and you were in an orphanage where nobody cared. We were in the devil's orphanage. Chained up, bound up. I know I was. And Father God busted the door down. And Jesus, because of what Jesus did, and say, I love you. And he lavished, he laughed. If you're in here and you're adopted, you know what I'm talking about. You know, my grandparents took me in, you know, uh, and raised me. And love me. And they just lavish their love on me. And they didn't have to. They'd already raised their kids. And it's like, like I had a home, man. I had security. I had a home. And that's what God is doing for us. He loves you. And he was intentional with his love. He lavishes his love on you. I'm telling you, he loves you. He is our protector. He's gentle. He's kind. He's merciful. He's just. But he's also a jealous God. And listen to me, he's not a jealous, like, angry and whip somebody over you, kind of mad, jealous. No, it's kind of a sad jealous, like, like hey, he, 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 he just wants to spend time with you. He wants to spend time with the ones that he loves. That's why he's a jealous God. We, 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 were, we were at uh, the theater last night, Glaywater Theater last night. Pete is performing. He, hey, he's got a show at 2 today. At 2, I'm going to pull up. Man, you got to go see. If y'all ain't got nothing going on today, y'all need to go see Pete. He's doing a Rat Pack show. It's really, really good. Like, really good. Anyway, his friend over there that owns the place, his name is Jack. All right? And he has a daughter that's 7 years old. And he was, telling, he was just shining, talking about it, telling us about showing us pictures of his little girl. What's her name? Roxy, her name's Roxy, precious little girl. I mean, just the just a, just a bright sunshine. He's talking about her, talking about her. And then as he's talking about her, he did say, he's like, man, he's like, she, she just doesn't want to spend a whole lot of time with me. She just, she just likes mama right now, you know. Doesn't want to, you know, you could, you could hear the jealousy. He's like, I'm jealous. He, just, he said, he's like, I'm so, so jealous of her. I'm like, I, I want to spend time with her. And we were all standing there talking, and, and I never forgot that, man. I was like, this is it. You think about, you picture God right now. You picture God, and he's looking at our individual lives and you think of the things that we spend time doing and, and, and it's not with him and he's sitting there he's like he's talking to, to his angels and he's he ready to man I'm just jealous I want to spend that time with him I want to spend that time I love them I want to spend time with them why because he's a loving father he's not one of these that you know wants to send you to the babysitter no 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 he wants to be with you he loves you He's jealous for you. So I say that to say this, guys. As men, what a wonderful example we have. Father God. He's a father to the fatherless. He's a servant of all. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you would, bow your heads. Guys, I, I just want you to focus on Jesus right now. I want you to focus on his love. Think about what he's done for you. I mean, he stepped out of heaven for you and me. He came and died for our wicked ways. He came and died for our addictions, our lying tongue, our cheating tongue, our cheating ways, and lustful ways, 
prideful ways, all about us. Man, he came and died for that. He died for that. And, and then he gave us the example how we should live now. Man, fathers, he gave us an example. He cured us from an incurable disease, sin. That's the greatest news ever. So my encouragement to you today is don't let that silence you. When we go into places or when we speak to people, we are representing Jesus Christ. Think about that first. We're representing His righteousness. So think about that next time you start to speak to somebody. Think about that next time you choose not to forgive somebody. Think about that next time you choose to get bitter or cuss somebody out. Think about that next time you choose to pick up your phone, men, and watch something you know you shouldn't. Man, think, is, that, is that really what Jesus wants you to do? He's wanting you to be an example for the next generation. And if you keep hiding yourself in your private time, doing things that you know you shouldn't be doing, it's just going to damage your testimony. It's just going to damage your heart where you, you, you're going to be so convicted you don't feel like doing anything. Don't let that devil silence you. Those of you in here today that's too busy, you're too busy. Life is too short. It's a mist or a vapor. Listen, don't be so busy you forget Jesus. He's the reason that you are busy, so honor him with it. He's blessed you, honor him with it. And let me challenge, challenge you with this. Jesus says, the great among you serve. I wonder what God's calling you to do. I wonder if there's some individuals in your life that God is asking you to do something in their life. I wonder if there's something in this church or that God may be calling you to do. Maybe he's calling you to, to teach, to serve in some way. I don't know. Only you know it's your heart. It's you in between and him. There's nothing like a church full of servants, man. We can do a lot for the kingdom, for those that want to serve. How's he, how's, he, how's he leading you to help? Help outside these doors. Don't ever pass that up. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for loving us. I, I thank you for revealing yourself that you are the strong servant in our life. That you came to the destination. That you came to that cross. You're the word of God and every letter that makes up the word. Everything between Aleph Tav. Everything between Alpha and Omega. Everything between A and Z. Lord, that's you. That's you. Lord, don't let a rock do our job. Put a fire in our bones. And Lord, if there's anybody here struggling today, I pray that they see that you are the answer. The one that struggled for us knows how to help through the struggle. Lord, we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would stand. I want you to just take this moment. This is a time of prayer. This is a time of worship. We're going to do one more song. Take a little inventory right now of your life. 
talk to God for a minute. A lot of talking to God sometimes is listening. Communication is listening too. So listen to what he's putting on your heart. Maybe you need to close your eyes where you're not distracted. Or maybe there's somebody in here today that, that, that you ain't seen in a while. Maybe you need to, you want to go over and love on them. Or maybe the Lord's leading, maybe somebody looks sad to you or something. Man, go over there and put a hand on them. Just do whatever the Lord's asking you to do. And then we can go get some chicken. Amen. Amen.